Hi, thanks. Um, I'm in the terrible position of having to follow Eirik Fotland, but then I remember that someone's followed Eirik Fotland since 1997, and so um, <laughs> someone has to do it. <laughs> I want to thank you for having me back. Um, last year, I gave a Nordic LARP talk that I was, I was very excited to be invited. And I talked about something that was a bit playful. And, and uh, this year, I'm talking about something that's not playful at all. And perhaps that has to do with um, last year was before we actually ran any of the Magiscola events. And <laughs> this is post Magiscola events. So we're going to talk today about a topic called Missing Stairs in LARP Communities. And so this is a tough topic um, and a vulnerable topic, but it needs to be done. And so we'll start off with what is a missing stair? And so you see the lady here taking the step over a stair that's not there, right? Sometimes you might have also heard it as a broken stair. And so it's a metaphor. And what it means is you have a predatory or problematic person in your community. And you know that it exists. You know that there's this problematic stare. But instead of fixing the problem, right, you just tell everyone that it exists, right? You tell them that they should step over the stare and make sure they're aware that that stare is there. And it's your job to figure out ways to go around it. And so the problem is everyone knows that it exists and they just pretend it doesn't. All is better now? <laughs> Yay! I don't feel quite as loud, so thank you. <laughs> um, so this person that's a missing stare, it usually has to do with abuse, harassment, predatory behavior, and especially um, of a sexual nature. And so the missing stairs and LARPs are the proverbial elephant in the room, right? Is that we know it's there and we, uh, it makes things a little difficult and no one's really acknowledging it. They might have friends or allies or supporters or co-abusers who are in positions of power. Um, leaders can abdicate responsibility for the missing stare for various reasons and we just work around it. The collective will or the collective resources is insufficient to actually fix the problem. And so an elephant in a room is one thing, a missing stare in a house is one thing, but now we have the flying elephant. And by that we mean that we're, LARP is a global community now, and so it's one thing for everyone in a specific community to know that they should step over this stair. But what we have now is we can have a predator from Britain who comes to Finland, or a predator from Norway who goes to Denmark, or a predator from America who goes to Poland, or a predator from any other country who comes to America. And because we have this global community, it makes this problem even more difficult because the way people have dealt with it is I've kept it in my community. And at least if it's in my community, it's not anywhere else and we can deal with it as part of the rationale. Except that now the elephants fly. And so you can have the problem of it, a person making actual threats or demands or it becoming a repeated or serial problem. So the issue is, how do communities tend to deal with missing stairs? They exist, right? And the way they tend to deal with it is uh, these sort of four W's, right? Is they, uh, they worry about it, right? And they, they know that it exists and they think it's a problem and they're not quite sure what to do with it. And it may be because they don't, they're overwhelmed by it and they have the best intentions but they aren't feeling equipped or able to do anything. Uh, they, they work on warning people about it, right? And so the resources are sent towards getting people to be aware. Um, they put people on watch, right? They say, this is sufficient. As long as we're watching them, then everything's okay. Right? And so the resources are actually diverted towards watching them. And then, of course, the workaround with the two main tools of LARP organizing, um, duct tape and WD-40, right? <laughs> Um, but in this case, they're, they're 
not fixing the stair, right? They are putting patches in place that maintain the problem. Um, another thing they might do is make excuses, right? Many things that we might have heard. We're trying to help them. LARP itself can be rehabilitating. Um, they have a right to play. They're my friend. Um, I don't want to create division in the community. My personal interactions with them have all been positive. Um, oh, you just don't know how to deal with them. They're just socially awkward. What do you want us to do? Treat them like a leper? We can't fix that problem, but we're doing our best. Cut us some slack. It's not a problem all the time. Today was a good day. They don't know any better. We'll just talk to them. Right? All of these things are problems that make this continue. What we need to understand is that these strategies protect the predator. We need to understand that these strategies enable the predator. We need to understand that these strategies normalize the behaviors and allow them to continue. Every day that a predator has a good day in a LARP is evidence that can be used against someone when they come forward to say that there's been a problem. These strategies send a message that abuse is tolerated in this community. And very importantly, these strategies devalue those who have been harmed and it discredits their experience. These strategies devalue the safety of other people. And unfortunately, these strategies allow others to continue to be harmed. Those are bitter pills to swallow because you think you're doing the right thing and you're doing your best and there's a lot of stuff coming at you and you care and you're empathetic and you want to treat people and you want them to be rehabilitated and you want them to learn and you believe that this is a medium where people can change. Some people can't be reformed. If you're trying to figure out what a missing stare looks like, they're very skilled. They're very good at what they do. They're believable. They're charming. They're charismatic. They're duplicitous. They vary their behavior based on the audience. So it can be legitimately true that every experience you've had with them is positive and every experience someone else has had with them is terrible. They have shock and denial when you tend to talk to them. Oh, I can't imagine what would have happened. I would never have thought that. They tend to turn things into being their own victim. They claim that they themselves are the targets of persecution or that someone has a vendetta against them or they themselves have been abused. They tend to want your pity. They want you to give them the emotional labor. They want to make things about them, their own contributions. They lie, they mislead, they omit information so that they can't be incriminated. And they have faulty memories. If you actually get more information about something, suddenly they might remember something that they didn't tell you before because they were in the lie, mislead, and omit stage. They are unrepentant. This continues the same story. Oh, there's a problem. I can't imagine that there's a problem. They seek power and influence. They seek out the vulnerable. They tend to make themselves indispensable to an organization. And then they call on that later as proof of their value. They groom supporters. They find people who are in their corner and in their club so that when there's an accusation against them, these people will come forward and, and be behind them and also against you. They make themselves bigger than they are, building up their own importance, and they create dependencies in other people. They have a tendency to want to be the rescuer. They will actually sometimes go out of their way to get an example of a time that they did something for social justice or to help someone else so they can point to that example when it's time for them to demonstrate and counter some accusation. And they'll gaslight, they'll help, with what Anything that other people tell or remember will somehow not be the truth. And sadly, predators use the alibi of role play itself to do harm. 
LARPs are a fantastic place for growth and breaking down your boundaries and learning things about yourself and learning things about society. They are also a hotbed for the kind of environment where a predator can do the most harm. You're out of your element. You're in a new place. You're trying something new. You're portraying a new character. You're vulnerable. You may be alone. LARPs themselves, they will get to say, it wasn't me, it was my character. Well, what can you do about these things? Well, first up, I think you need to listen to the people who come forward with bad experiences. Those people are very brave, and they're likely terrified. You need to believe them and validate the other people's experiences, especially when they're different from your own. You speak up. Support and advocate those who are speaking up. Many of them won't come forward on their own publicly because of such amazing fear of retaliation, ostracization, and, and fear, just fear of, of, of being considered a problem. And so sometimes you get the information through a proxy. So speak up again, especially to those who have influence. Something else you might be able to do is support the tough calls. When an organizer has to make a tough call, don't assume that they've suddenly lost their minds. Don't assume that this person or these policies that were in place before that made sense are suddenly now being abused. Don't assume that uh, discrimination is happening. You have to respect that you may not have all the information and you may not have all the information, and you may never have all the information. And that has to do with privacy, and it has to do with l a very real protection of those people who, should they be known, uh, may experience actual physical or emotional harm again. You can demand accountability from organizers. All right, if the game organizer refuses to take the hard decisions, and to remove unrepentant, unreformed predators, or if they make a hostile environment for those who have been harmed, then don't support their games. Vote with your wallet. Something else you can try to do is share information. This is fraught, right? Remember the flying elephant. So what can happen is you get someone who burns a bridge in a community and just goes and finds another community. And it takes some time for that community to figure out what's going on. And so sharing information, especially with other organize, organizers, is important. You can have a code of conduct and a process for reporting, for decision making, and for reporting a decision. And having that code of conduct is so huge because when it happens, and if it hasn't happened yet, it will happen, you need something to fall back on to say, this is what I do. I do this first, and then I do this second, because you're mortified, and you're, you're completely upset and confused that this could happen, and so you have the steps that you can do. The steps also help tell other people what will be done, because one of the things that happens is people cry unfair, they cry foul, they think the organizer is playing favorites, they think they are being um, overreactive or overzealous, right? And you can say, this is the code of conduct. This is what was expected. There were violations. We took this action. It's on page 12. You can have a safe space, a safety committee, and safety mechanics in your LARP community. And those help people to want to come forward and take, um, and take action. And you reiterate that the players are more important than the LARPs. And people have to know that and feel that. And you have to take action. This is not a case for hypocrisy. This is not a case where you make lip service and say, oh, sure, we'll take care of it, and you make a backroom deal. It is not your responsibility to rehabilitate these people. You need to fix the stare. And you need to know that when you do this, you become a target. You become a target for all the people who are supporters of this person. You become a target for taking an action that appears to be um, punitive to someone who is considered valuable. Because 
Like it or not, a lot of times these predators are fantastic role players. It goes hand in hand. So when you do this, you will become a target. Do it anyway. Thanks. <laughs>